Martin Traniacs wrapping up to our ride with some very fun little new kicks. One second dramatic slow-mo kicks right now. How beautiful are those, right? Today ain't about cycling kicks. Nah, -uh. it's about running shoes. Specifically, how everything you've heard about running shoes up till now is wrong. Actually, not these ones. These ones are pretty good. All right, Trainiac, so this is just gonna be a regular old sit down and chat, but don't worry. I'm sure we can dig up some footage of really good looking man running to you know, fill in the gaps, make it very entertaining for you. You're welcome. So an article was written with the title very sensational last week that everything you knew about running shoes was wrong. Now there's really nothing new in this article. Essentially what it's saying is that pronation control shoes, there's really no conclusive evidence that pronation itself actually causes injury. Minimal shoes, there's actually no conclusive evidence that minimal shoes reduce injury. Now essentially the gist of it is that the writer talked about how pronation, and that's an, over, an overturning of the foot in the foot stride, is actually not whatsoever proven to actually cause injury, which is wild because the entire shoe industry lives and breathes off of stability and pronation control and stopping us from pronating. Now on the other hand, the minimal shoe movement that are dealing with very, very light shoes where your foot can strengthen and move freely, that actually has no conclusive evidence that those types of shoes actually reduce injury. If anything, those types of shoes actually increase injury. And at the very other end of it, the more built up, the more maximal shoes, the very cushiony, those Hoka type shoes, those actually really have no conclusive evidence that those reduce injury. So what the hell do you do? How do you decide what type of shoe to buy? Well, I've been saying this for probably the last year as people have said, what shoe do you have? What shoe do you recommend? Here's my type of build. What shoe should I have? Here's how you approach shoe purchasing, selection, and love. I like shoes. I like running shoes a lot. But before we get into that, let's go back in time and understand like how did this come about? How did we get to the point that we have stability shoes, pronation control shoes, maximal shoes, minimal shoes? Well, starting with the stability shoes intended to stop us from that pronation movement. About 30 years ago in the heydays of running, it was thought that basically anything besides a perfect foot stride or a perfect foot land and movement with your knee was going to cause injury. People were getting injured all over the place, but actually it was at basically the same rate as they are now. And those injuries were associated with those inefficient movement patterns. So shoe companies come out having to sell shoes and they say, look, we have the answer for you. We're gonna create a stability shoe and it's gonna stop that movement stops that movement, but what happens is you still pronate, it just is now inside the shoe. It's just on top of a stability footbed. You're still pronating, you're still doing your natural movement, nothing changes. Then fast forward to about five to 10 years ago, a book called Born to Run comes out, which essentially says that running nearly barefoot is going to promote a four foot stride that was gonna soften the overall impact on your body. It was gonna force you to land with your foot underneath your center of gravity and there, that's the answer and nobody's ever gonna get injured once they strengthen up their feet. Well, evidence now shows that if anything, because we have a lot of people going out and trying to run barefoot, trying to run in more minimal shoes, and we don't have the same biomechanics and the same history of a lifetime of toughening up our body structure the same way that those indigenous tribes in the Born to Run book did have, there is, if anything, an increased 
likelihood of injury by going to more minimal shoot. Also, the evidence shows that the lessened impact caused by going to that more minimal shoe actually is basically the same amount of impact. It just doesn't happen as quickly as when you land on your heel. It's not instant, but you still have the same amount of impact coming through your body. I mentioned this in a video that I will link to up here that what is most important is not landing on your forefoot or your midfoot. You can land anywhere you like as long as it's ideally under your center of gravity. And that's all oversimplified and everyone that is a sports scientist that has studied biomechanics can correct me on the nuances of it. I know a lot of the nuances of it, but for our sake, what we're talking about here is land under your center of gravity. Doesn't matter if it's your heel or your forefoot. So then people start saying, okay, well, I'll, I'll, you know what? I'll use racing flat style shoes so they're not so minimal, but I got a fair bit of cushioning. Fact of the matter is though, that those racing style shoes were designed for really fast runners in mind. And those fast runners, the Marinda Carfrays of the world, the Patrick Langas of the world, the amount of time that their foot spends on the ground is, it is, so, so small that they don't need as much cushioning in their shoe and they can get away with less cushioning and any sort of inefficiencies landing on their heel or landing with a little bit of pronation. We can't get away with all that. So essentially what the science has got to say is that you want to use as much of a cushion shoe as you possibly can while not changing your natural foot stride. As soon as you start adding a bunch of weight, as soon as you start adding too much material, depending on how your foot strike is, you're going to at some point feel like it's not natural anymore. So can you go with hokas? Yes. Can you go with racing flats? Yes. Can you go with a more bread and butter on running shoe around eight ounces, like the Saucony Kinvaras, the New Balance Fresh Foam, things like that. Yes, 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 and yes. It doesn't really matter. Essentially what you're looking for when you start selecting shoes is something that feels completely natural and effortless, like you're not fighting the shoe. And what this involves is you're gonna have to be able to develop a relationship with some type of running shoe store where they'll let you try out a pair of running shoes for an extended period of time walking up and down an aisleway, that's not gonna do it for you. Or you might have to go to an online store, buy a bunch of shoes, test them out, and then see what ends up working for you. Now in my case, what I've got to is about an eight ounce running shoe with anywhere between a zero and eight or nine millimeter heel to toe drop, a neutral shoe, that is a fair bit flexible. And no matter what the brand is, I know that if I switch between all of those in and around that kind of family of shoe, I know I'm gonna be good. So there you go triathletes. I hope that this answers your question about a lot of the propaganda that you see out there about running shoes. I know that this is a very polarizing topic. So I wanna hear from you about what running shoes you use and why you use them Give me that info in the description below. And if you aren't yet already subscribed, hit the subscribe button. Later, Trainiacs.